Hey everyone. So we are going to go over our act one notes. This is act one, scene one. Um, and then from there we are going to, I think, read um, a little bit in graphic novel form and then we're going to read in modern writing. But anyway, here is act one, scene one, the very beginning of Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so we have two people. These two people, let's say zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. These two people are Samson and Gregory, um, and they are servants of what house? Can you remember what house? They are the servants of the Capulet house. Okay, they're strolling through the streets of, and then do you guys remember where this happens? Where is the play taking place? It starts with a V. It's called Verona. Okay, so... Here's what we have. Two guys, Samson and Gregory, they're two servants of the Capulet house, strolling the seats of streets of Verona together. So Samson is venting his hatred for the house of, and what's the other house's name? Montague. Okay, the house of Montague. They're talking about how much they hate these people. The two exchange punning remarks about physically conquering Montague men and sexually conquering Montague women. I know it's vulgar, but... We're skipping past that now. So then one of them, Gregory, sees two Montague servants approaching. Okay. So we have two servants from the Capulet side, two servants from the Montague side. They're approaching one another. So Gregory discusses with Samson the best way to provoke them into a fight without breaking the law. Okay. All right. So here we go. Samson is going to do this clever little trick, which is he bites his thumb. And this is like equivalent of like flicking someone off, maybe a little worse than flicking someone off. Um, think of a gesture that is just insulting and you're trying to start something that is biting your thumb at this time. So Samson bites his thumb at the Montague servants. Um, a verbal confrontation quickly escalates into a fight. Okay, so they are about to start fighting right now. Um, and then someone comes along. His name is Benvolio, and he is a kinsman to... Do you guys remember which house Benvolio is loyal to? He's loyal to the Montagues. Okay. Um, so he enters and draws his sword in an attempt to stop everyone from fighting. Okay. So then someone else comes along. His name is Tybalt. Tybalt is a kinsman to the other side, which is the Capulet side. He sees Benvolio's drawn sword and draws his own. So Benvolio tries to explain that he is merely trying to keep the peace, but Tybalt professes a hatred for peace as strong as his hatred for Montague's, and he attacks Benvolio. Okay. Um, so we have quite a brawl happening here between one side and the other, the Capulets and the Montagues. Okay, remember Montague family is the one that Romeo is a part of, and the Capulet is the one that Juliet is a part of. If you can't remember that, I think of Capulet, Juliet. Okay, Romeo and Montague, there isn't much similar between those two names, but Capulet, Juliet. Okay, anyways, so what happens now? The brawl spreads, and a group of citizens bearing clubs attempts to um, restore the peace by beating down the combatants, basically everyone who's fighting. So a group of, oops, I forgot to hit that, citizens. Okay, so citizens of Verona are trying to stop the fighting from happening. So um, Montague and Capulet, this is Lord Montague and Lord Capulet, the two like patriarchs of their households, they both enter, and only their wives prevent them from attacking one another. Otherwise, they would have. But Lady Montague and Lady Capulet stepped in. Um, then we have someone pretty important. Prince Ascelis arrives and commands that the fighting stops on the penalty of torture. Okay, so everyone needs to put down everything they're doing right now because this prince is not playing around. So he arrives and commands them to stop. The Capulets and the Montagues throw down their weapons, and the prince declares that the violence between the two families has gone on for too long and proclaims a death sentence upon anyone who disturbs 
the civil peace again. So if you want to fight in my streets again, go for it. But I'm you're getting the death sentence. So, I mean, unless you're trying to die, maybe you shouldn't be fighting. Okay, so he says um, that he will speak to um, Montague and Capulet more directly on this matter. So Capulet exits with him. Um, the brawlers disperse. So they all kind of find their places again. They go back to where they came from. And Benvolio is left alone with his uncle and his aunt, who are Montague and Lady Montague. Okay? Yes, Benvolio is their nephew. So Benvolio describes to his uncle, Montague, how the brawl started. And Lady Montague asks whether Benvolio has seen her son, Romeo. So Benvolio replies that he saw Romeo pacing through a grove of sycamores, a grove of, a grove of trees outside the city, but did not speak to him. Okay. So why didn't he speak to him? He said that Romeo seemed troubled. So concerned about their son, the Montagues tell Benvolio that Romeo has often been seen melancholy. So this is like a sad... Um, kind of, um, uh, like, decrepit, like, state, okay? So melancholy. Think of, like, sadness. Um, yeah, okay. So he's been seen melancholy, walking, walking alone among the sycamores, the trees. Um, they add that they have tried to discover what troubles him, but they have had no success. So Benvolio is about to go see. Benvolio sees Romeo approaching and promises to find out the reason for his melancholy. Um, the Montagues quickly depart so they can have a chat. So Benvolio and Romeo can have a chat. So Benvolio approaches his, and then what is Romeo to him? Romeo is his cousin. So Benvolio approaches his cousin, Romeo. With a touch of sadness, Romeo tells Benvolio that he is in love with this girl named Rosaline. Okay, Rosaline. Not Juliet, not yet. He doesn't, he hasn't met Juliet yet. Um, but that she does not return his feelings and has, in fact, sworn to live a life of chastity. She will not be seeing anyone anytime soon. Okay. Um, so Benvolio, hearing this news, encourages Romeo to forget about her. Forget about her by gazing at other women. Like, if you just look at other women, see what other women have to offer, other beauties, you will probably get over this girl, Rosaline. Okay. Um, but Romeo contends that the woman he loves is the most beautiful of all. So that's, he's talking about Rosaline right now. Okay. So Romeo departs, um, assuring Benvolio that he cannot teach him how to forget his love, no matter how many different beauties he's looking at. And Benvolio decides that he is going to try. He's going to do just that. Okay. He's going to get Romeo out of love with Rosaline probably by getting him to look at other beauties. Okay, that is act one, scene one. Now I think you guys are doing a little bit of graphic novel reading.